Hey, dumb people. <laughs> uh, I was out here and somebody was shooting over here in this area. So I'm standing out here and I'm kind of looking. I'm kind of like, oh shit, I wonder if I should be standing out here in the open when they're shooting in case I took a stray bullet. So I started thinking about cover and concealment. And I've talked about this before. Cover protects you, concealment hides you. So a lot of people will say cover and concealment and they think that just means hiding. And it, it, it kind of does mean hiding, but one hides you from the person seeing you to get an effective shot on you, and the other one protects you if the person is shooting at you. So when I was just standing out here on the patio, I'm kind of like, okay, so what is cover and concealment? If somebody's sh shooting at me from out there, these three wooden beams here could be a little bit of cover and maybe not a lot of concealment. I could stand right behind this pole right here and I'm gonna have cover for some weapons for pan guns most rifles would go through this but I would have cover if I was right behind this now obviously there's another pole right there and there's a third pole right there so if I was standing here and my target was out here then I would have better cover from these three poles than I would if I just stood behind one pole because the bullet would have to get in between these three poles to get to me now uh, obviously this this swing here could also be a little cover I, I would look at it as more as concealment I could maybe hide behind it or lay down underneath it it's not going to give me a whole bunch of protection from a bullet but it may give me a little protection if somebody threw a grenade or something and it threw some shrapnel or it hit something and splinters were coming down or he shot something from the roof and it was going to fall on me if I was underneath it, it would give me a little bit of protection. So as you're looking around and you're walking, you should kind of be looking for different things that if I had to take cover, or if I had to take concealment right now, where would I go? So obviously if you're out in the open, you're kind of going to be out there. Now that metal beam, fire hydrant, both pretty good cover options. I can lay down behind that fire hydrant, it's going to give me pretty good protection against most guns. Uh, it's not going to be very wide, especially if I'm wide, then they're going to be able, but I can protect my vital organs. I can protect that fatal T. My head straight down on my spine and right down my heart, lungs, instead of the, the main part of my organ. So even though I can only get cover, protection from a bullet behind a fire hydrant, if I was centered and stayed centered on the opposite side of the guy or the, the suspect or person shooting at me, it would protect my vital organs. I may take a hit in the arm, I may take a hit in the shoulder or in the elbow, but it wouldn't be a life deadening threat in the head or down my fatal T. I've got a picture of the fatal T on my website if you want to look at the picture where I explain that. Uh, all these trees out here, obviously good things. Uh, this tree right here is pretty, pretty, pretty wide, pretty good cover. If I was behind that, I'll run out and get behind that real quick to show you what cover looks like if I was behind this uh, tree and um, see how much you see me. But I'm, I'm, again, I'm not gonna be able to see this, so I'll just try, I'll, I'm gonna be talking from the blind here. So, if I'm behind this tree, if I stand like this, you're gonna get an arm, maybe a leg, I put my feet together, maybe curve my arms in, you're only maybe even get a shoulder. If I stand like this, I'm gonna get a little bit better protection from you, and I'm gonna have a little bit cover. You're, you're only going to get, if I bend over my butt, if I stick my belly out, uh, if I stick my hand out. Now, if I have a gun and my head's out and I'm shooting back at you, I should be able to be behind cover, but you're only going to be able to see limited amounts of me. Now, I'm using my, uh, my right eye, so I'm not showing as much. If I had to switch sides, I would change my stance, get my gun around, get my gun on there and now I'm using my left eye and you should only see my hand if I'm doing this you're gonna see my elbow if I'm doing this you're gonna see a lot more of my body so learning to shoot and hide behind cover but still be able to keep your gun I'm, I'm right at the camera right now so I can pretty much whatever you can see is what you can hit but the rest of me should be hidden behind this tree so when you're talking about cover and concealment, you need to be understanding that 
in order to get the best cover behind something, you may need to weigh, change the way you're standing. This metal bar right here, be pretty good. Um, it's wide enough to where I can get pretty good. I forgot to flip this last time, so I couldn't really see. So if I want to get behind this, pretty stick metal, uh, a rifle's probably going to go through it, but I can kind of pretty much hide behind here. Uh, I can even get my gun out here, and I'm actually looking between this, and I can kind of get a target on where I'm at, and I can shoot and kind of look at you through this area. Um, if I wanted to shoot around this area, I want to stay behind it. I'm going to bring my gun around here. I may just fire a couple rounds to get you to duck and then move my head out to get my sight and then wait for you to peek out. So I don't necessarily have to do this to shoot. I can do this to shoot behind cover and then peek my head out after I get you to look down and then get my hand. I don't want to get my face too close because I'll get hit and I'll get hit and this. And that's happened sometimes when you get caught up in a and, and some sort of gunfire cover, you find yourself on top of the gun getting really close and then you're going to get hit. Uh, a scope rifle, same way, if you're trying to get uh, your, uh, I forgot what the eye, eye relief, correct. So, uh, when thinking about covering a sealant, that gate would not be very good covering concealment. You can see right through it, but it does give me some concealment. The bullet's got to get in between those rails to get me. So would I rather be behind the bob wire strand fence or behind that gate? If those are my only two options, I'm taking a gate. If I got a pole, I'm taking a pole. But again, sometimes when you're looking for cover and sealment, you've got to take the best available. Um, this pallet may not be great cover to stop a bullet, but I may be able to hide behind it and blend in a little bit and, and maybe... You know, if he does shoot me, he's got to get through the 4x4s or the 2x4. It's going to slow down the bullet. It may impact. It's going to do less damage when it hits me. So cover, although I think the theory and what people want you to believe is it protects you 100%, any cover is good if it slows down the bullet, if it deflects, reflects, uh, you know, makes the bullet ricochet, slowers the impact, slowers the speed, velocity, uh, you know, makes the bullet bigger and flatter on the front because it has to go through something. All those things will help a bullet. Um, now, the shed back there where the horses are usually at, that's a tin building. That's not very good cover, but it's great concealment because I can get behind there and you don't know where I'm at. Now, if you, can, if you want to spray and pray and just shoot bullets all along there, then I have to be on the ground. But if you spray and pray low, if I'm on the ground or not, you may hit my legs. So, when you're shooting at somebody, the, the thing about covering cement is when you're shooting at somebody, a lot of people can't. It's almost like when we go in fight or flight, we go back to our childhood to where if we cover our eyes and we can't see it, it's not there. And uh, I, I remember the situation where the uh, there was this uh, cop on a traffic stop and he's, 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 I guess I need to zoom out a little bit here so I can... So he has his uh, ticket book in his hand, and a guy pulls a gun on him. And what the cop does is he holds this little, it was a little, like a clipboard, he puts it flat in front of the guy's gun. And the guy, instead of just shooting through the phone or through the clipboard, the guy tries to go around it. And the cop gets in to, I'm keeping this little thin piece of shit between the gun and you. The guy did not shoot, and it gave the officer time to draw his gun and return fire because the guy who had a gun on him just saw there's something blocking my barrel. I have to, I've never trained or shot to go around it. I just did a video where a guy shot his hand by putting in front of the barrel. My finger's off the trigger, people. So, <laughs> but, so the guy was making him move his gun because in his mind he was just like, shit, I should just shoot through that thing. I'm gonna hit the cop. I don't care about that stinking, you hold a clipboard in front of me and my gun, I'm pegging a clipboard. I don't give a shit. But I'm thinking tactically, and I understand that, and I've been exposed to it. Somebody that's never exposed to it, it kind of, it, it's not expecting it. You're kind of like, what the hell? This guy's got my gun blocked. I can't shoot him. All that was, it wasn't cover or concealment, but it bought him time. It bought him time to where I could go for my gun, get my gun out, and return fire. So, understanding cover and concealment is a little bit deeper and broader than a lot of people want to explain it. Uh, 
you need to think about things like I said when I'm walking um, if I had to take cover I'd be behind those bushes those bushes aren't going to stop a bullet but I'm going to be able to crawl between the house and I can move I can go in the bushes here and I can crawl and either come out there or get down there and get my gun out and return far from there and a lot of people will shoot in the area they last saw you if I jump in a bush here people are going to shoot right there now me if you jump in a bush there on me I'm shooting bang 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 I'm covering that whole freaking area and if someone else happens to be hiding there well they're just going to get shot too so uh, and, and same thing when I'm clearing a building if a guy ducks behind a wall or he runs around a corner I'm shooting straight through sheetrock I know sheetrock two by fours in a house with insulation my bullets will go through that shit easy I ain't worried about it I don't care if it's if the bullets gonna be less effective once it gets through that I don't care if it slows down all I'm trying to do is cause blood loss or get hits on target to make this guy rethink his actions to leave a blood trail to get DNA to slow down his movement to maybe make him concentrate more on running than getting in a straight-on fight and coming back at me so a guy runs around a wall on me I'm peppering that wall and I'm firing as if I was on the other side of that wall moving at the same speed he was I'm not gonna go shit he's behind a wall I can't shoot let me run around and look down the wall to see where he's at if I got the right to shoot and you're running and I know you're gonna kill him if you get away I'm peppering that wall as you're running I do the same thing in a house if a guy shot at me from this window and then ducked down guess what I'm shooting here on the window I'm shooting on I know the layout of the room but windows are usually high I'm shooting below that window I'm shooting to the left and right of that window especially if I got a rifle I'm peppering wherever somebody's gonna hide around that window I'm not shooting at the window a lot of people will shoot back at the window because that's where the fire came from they get tunnel vision on that window and they start shooting back at the window but again if you're tactically thinking and you're knowing where the person would be I'm not shooting at the window I'm shooting around that freaking window where he's gonna be hiding around that window to make sure he ain't waiting to come back out through that window if he comes back out through the window I can see him and then I'll shoot at the window but if he ain't in the window I ain't shooting at the window and I'm not not shooting I'm still returning fire I'm laying down you know the old saying in tactics if you make your adversary advance on you in a wall of ammunition or, or around uh, in a wall of rounds being fired at them they're less likely to continue to come at you so I don't want this guy sticking his head back out and he's less likely to do that if bullets are flying around that window around the bottom if he lays down I'm gonna shoot below that window and get him on the ground if he's standing beside that window I'm gonna shoot on both sides of the window and get him standing on both but Rick what about if there's a kid in there and you shoot look in a tactical situation when you're fighting for your life you know things change you don't you don't go into am I legal or is this that you know what if I'm after a guy and he's shooting at me to kill me when I'm after it, once you make you make yourself a target to me you're a target to me and you know rules of engagement is I win and you lose this other crap they're tying our military hands and they make all these rules and this acceptable and that and you can't do this you can't in a survival situation all that shit goes out the window you can deal with that later you know but it's better that you have to deal with it when you're alive than then think about it and be dead okay so that's my little spiel on covering concealment chicken why are you raising cane over there boy girl all right we'll end that there chicken cover see that chicken it's using a little concealment right now it's not cover let me show you what happens when it goes to cover I'm gonna throw a rock over there say this chicken's gonna stimulate cover okay see how it took off that's that's cover he moved to cover because he's like I'm going around this damn wall so he can't hit me with that rock <laughs> so I threw a rock in the bush and the chicken the mind of a chicken that everybody says so stupid was smart enough not to come out in the open not to stay where it was at and not to stand behind the bush thinking that it was gonna protect it it ran along the sidewalk on a wall and it's on the other side of the house right now alright so that's chicken tactics 101